Hey, this is Steve from the Tech Circuit with a video about relay driver circuits. So, what's a relay driver circuit? It's a part of many of the boards that we're familiar with, such as refrigerator, oven and range, washer and dryer, and HVAC applications that actually turns the relay on. In this video, I'm going to go over how the circuit works from a theoretical standpoint. Some of the things that you would expect to find in a functioning circuit, as well as some of the things and voltages and failures that you would expect in a circuit that has failed. So how does this actually work? Well, let's work backwards. You have a relay that has a coil, which is rated at whatever voltage, 12 volts, 24. Uh, this particular circuit is 12 volts. So you have your relay coil. When that coil is energized, obviously this normally open switch closes and energizes the load. So how do we energize the relay? Well, we can typically, if you have a switch here, you can just turn it on and then you're, you have 12 volts at the top of the relay, zero volts at the bottom, 12 volt difference across the relay is gonna turn it on and then close the switch and turn the load on. In this case, we have a transistor acting as a switch. Transistor can be used primarily in, as an amplifier or as a switch. In this case, it's being configured as a switch. And when it is used as a switch, the voltage across the transistor from the emitter to the collector is maybe a quarter volt. So you've got almost 12 volts across the relay and that turns it on. So how do we turn this transistor on? Well, to turn this transistor on, you need to provide enough current here to put it into what's known as saturation. Basically, in English, that means turning it on as a switch. And in order to do that, enough current has to flow through here, down through this resistor, down to ground. In this case, we have another transistor used as a switch. So let's just pretend that is a closed switch right there. So when you have 12 volts going through this, junction here. This is treated as a diode when the transistor is in being used as a switch. And that's going to be 0.7 volts across there. The other 11.3 volts is going to appear across this resistor here, which essentially turns this transistor on. But since we have 11.3 volts here, you can't connect this directly to the microcontroller in most cases. Most microcontrollers aren't capable of dealing with voltages that high because they are designed to run on only 3.3 or 5 volts and most of them their outputs are not can't tolerate this high of a voltage some can but most can't so what we do is we add another driver transistor here which is also a switch and essentially it turns this on brings this down to ground and we get our 11.7 volts there, we get basically zero volts here, and then turns this transistor on, turns the relay on. So why do we have this here? Well, because all this microcontroller now has to do is provide 0.7 volts to this transistor to turn it on, which a microcontroller has no problem doing. So we have this current limiting resistor here, because we don't want to just put five volts up against what essentially is a diode to ground because we're going to short out the microcontroller. We put this resistor there, which drops the other 4.3 volts because we're at 0.7 volts there. And this transistor is happy. It gets turned on, goes into saturation. Again, just switches on. Turns this transistor on and turns the relay on. A couple of things to mention about the circuit here is this resistor here, the 47K, is there to pull the base of this transistor up when this transistor is turned off. So when the microcontroller is at zero, this transistor is off, we need to make sure that this base of this transistor goes up high so that this transistor stays off. Another thing to mention is that diode. Without that diode, you have this coil here, and essentially it's an inductor. If you have 12 volts across that inductor and you suddenly shut it off, and since an inductor by nature resists changes in current, it compensates by creating a negative voltage spike of 
somewhere around 100 plus volts. If you, have, if you were to have an oscilloscope, you'd actually see that on there. And the reason for this diode is to clamp that voltage so that it stays at no greater than 0.7 volts. The way this diode is pointing, if you have 12 volts coming down here, that diode's reverse bias. It's not going to affect your circuit. But when this relay does pump out that negative 100 volt spike or so, it's going to get clamped out by that diode. If you didn't have that diode there, that spike can easily take this transistor out. And I've seen some very poor designs that didn't have that where that actually happened. It could also make its way down to this transistor, take this one out, or make its way to the microcontroller, take it out, or possibly just reset the microcontroller, something of that nature. So you, you almost have to have that diode there. So here's a protoboard mock-up for that circuit where you have your relay, your main driver transistor, which is that one, your pre-driver, this guy here, and then a microcontroller pulse. We're going to simulate a 5-volt pulse using a 5-volt Zener diode and a resistor to create a voltage reference. So when I press this button here, we should get a little over 0.7 volts right there. Which forward bias is this? Turns this transistor on. There's our 0.7 volts. Turns this transistor on, drops this down. This one drops down at the base to greater than 0.7 volts below the 12 volts, which turns that transistor on. This transistor is turned on. We've got almost 12 volts at the top of the relay. We've got 11.78. So that transistor is only dropping um, about 0.2 volts, which is what we want. I hope this video was informative. Please see the next video on relay circuit failures and troubleshooting.